It doesn't seem to be a dull day where Arsenal Football Club are concerned, even during this international break. Allegedly, Benjamin White's recovery will take longer than expected and potentially his 2024, what's left of it, is over. The ITKs of this world are saying Isaac is our number one target. Where have we heard that before? And we've been linked once again with more sporting directors, people. Obviously, Edu is currently serving garden and leave, but it was announced a week or two ago that he'd be leaving. The world of football has been a mad you know, you've seen VAR footage, well, audio footage come out in relation to Saliba, a whole heap of injuries connected to this Arsenal football club, whether it's January or in the summer, we've been linked with several players, allegedly the Cronkies and the Arsenal decision makers are having a meeting. And yeah, obviously we're nervous in relation to what's left of the league. You know, there's about 27, 28 more games left of the league campaign. We've only played give or take 10 or 11 and think about all the different talking points. But forget all of that, smash the like button, let me know your thoughts, people. Get the creative juices flowing. We need to get to 70k, so I'd appreciate if you turn on your notification bells and smash the like button. Let me share my screen and let's crack on. Now, uh, Sammy Motbell of the Daily Mail has been speaking about a couple of things directly and indirectly that affect our football club. It's behind the paywall, so I've used remove paywall, obviously, don't shoot me, but you, you get it. it is what it is, people. Completely off topic, but Brighton have apparently sacked off a lot of their scouts. Why don't we employ a couple like Arsenal? But anyways, people, let's see exactly what this is. Arsenal eye up Edu replacement. Bayern Leverkusen's managerial, managing apologies director of sports, Simon Rules, forgive me for mispronunciation, I'm sure he's a former player, is among the early names on Arsenal's radar as they begin the process of replacing Edu. I mean, similar to Arsenal, I'm sure he was involved. I could be wrong in bringing in Jabby Alonso. And we all know Leverkusen, you know, they've bought players like Boniface, you know, that was playing in Belgium, I believe, obviously of Nigerian heritage, bought a number of South American players. They bought a lot of emerging talents that have amassed a decent squad then indirectly that's what we want to do or aspire to do as well as can we just get the the the, the, the checks out and sign at Isaac or Kudus and all of these things people the Mail Sport exclusively revealed last week that Edu was departing the Emirates Stadium to take a new global position with a multi-club structure potentially with Greek businessman Ivan Gelos Marinkas pardon me, stable of clubs, which include Nottingham Forest, as we know. Arsenal executives are in LA this week for talks with the club's ownership with how they look to replace Edu, sure to be on the agenda. Mel Sport understands Rules is among those who has admirers behind the scenes at Arsenal as they start the process of identifying candidates for the vacancy. And I mean, time is kind in that he's in his early 40s. Under Rules, who played 26 times for Germany, knew I've seen you play. Leverkusen have broken Bayern Munich's stranglehold on the Bundesliga title as the team coached by Xabi Alonso won their first domestic title last season. Big up Leverkusen, great achievement. And then, you know, big up our boy Xhaka, but a bit overdoing it, broken the stranglehold, if I'm honest with you, you know, until I see a team win about 20 million Bundesliga in a row, like Bayern Munich, I'm not too sure how far that goes, but journalists will be journalists, people. Um, and his work at Leverkusen has not gone unnoticed behind the scenes at the Emirates as they get to grips with the sort of profile of candidates they look to appoint. Real Sausages director of football, Roberto Alebi, is also likely to emerge as a contender following his decision to leave the La Liga club at the end of the season which is interesting we've been linked with you know obviously mr rules we've been linked with tim steiden we've been linked with monaco's tiago squero again i'm butchering names forgive me if i'm wrong uh, we've been linked with a couple of people only god knows and those who they're probably eyeing up people. I just quickly typed his name on Google, people, just to see if we can find anything. I should probably make a video kind of delving a bit more in depth on this, people, all the CEOs we've been linked with. But yeah, he helped bring in Jabby Alonso. He's been, you know, apparently he helped sign Tat Soba, who he was linked with, Palacios. Obviously, I don't really rate Shrik, but he's done all right. Jeremy Frimpong, Hinka P, and a bunch of players have come in and done well and enhanced their reputations, in which I want Arsenal to go out and sign a could as as uh, Isaac, a Yokore's relative household names. But you know me, people. I love the emerging kind of talents. And, you know, for different reasons, Saliba, Bakayo Saka, Martinelli, Martin Odegaard, you know, to a degree when he was here and, and playing Smith Row. Benjamin White, we brought him off the back of one Premier League season. Guys that are not quite held in high regards. Of course, we signed some for some big money. They've done all right and their reputations have enhanced and grew and stuff. So it ticks in. He also helped sign Boniface, Granite Jacques and Gilmando, as we know, people. 
So he's clearly competent. I mean, go and get that done. Apparently, Thiago Scuro is Arsenal's priority to replace Edu as sporting director at the Emirates Stadium, according to numerous reports. And though a figure of and though a figure of relative low profile, he has cut an impressive figure in the current role at Monaco. Fair enough. Now, this could be an interesting soundbite because, you know, I'm just going to say this isn't Mikel Arteta. But if you close your eyes, does this would this sound like something the gaffer would say where Arsenal are at, the, at in this current moment in time? The idea is we want to develop is to play aggressive football, style of football, absolutely, resolutely focused on the offensive side of things. But to be fair, offensive sides are all right, cool. Open your eyes, I'll tell you, going to say that. The, this way of playing creates many chances and we have very good players ready to exploit them to score. And at the back, we are working hard to defend as a team in the best possible way. Everyone is playing together, whether in attack or defence, such as the modern day. It gives us the consistency to attack well this season i'm on that i like that people um and apparently he's also said we want to maintain a good mix between experience and youth because this corresponds to the history of the club and this is how we want to move forward bringing along young talents is part of monaco's dna but above all we must remain efficient on the pitch where i think we want you know we've seen it with bakayo saka smith rowe jack wilshire young ethan in in shot those of you that are old enough to remember you know tony adams came come through our academy r.i.p roll castle you've got him i mean who doesn't want academy grads i hate to praise them lot that we recently drew a game against at Stamford Bridge but I would like to well boy I'd like to win a Champions League or two like them and I would like to I, I know you just want to win a Champions League but you know when you look at that picture I think Christensen who although he's not English came through their academy kind of Reese James Hudson Adoy Mount the list goes on it be how lovely would it be to get back in the Premier League race and win the Premier League but also win the Champions League in that regards how good would it be to have a blend of such in which indirectly we do some players didn't cost that much obviously whether you rate him or not Kai Havot signed for 65 million you know Mr Declan Rice signed for 100 and equally they've become main parts rightly or wrongly if you agree or not of Arsenal's team uh keeping up the theme with directors don't worry people soon we're going to get over this but I can only talk on what's in the present day let me know your thoughts on anything so far allegedly the real sausage that director of football roberto alebi is very happy with the offer on the table from arsenal and welcomes the offer from the gunners that's according to reports from spain the newspaper insists that arsenal are very interested in his services and he welcomes the offer from the club although for now his focus remains on real sociedad now i must admit i don't know do you go for a more experienced guy like him you know not that it matters about religion and race and country and all of that but him being a Sociedad man or a Spanish man like Mikel Arteta in which, you know, David Rai has been signed. We've got a whole leap of coaches that are Spanish. They might be from the same tra uh, train of thought, if that makes sense. So we're more likely to see consistency in that regard. Now, him being an experienced director, obviously, I'm not saying he's David Dean and I'm not saying Mikel Arteta is Wenger. And I've said this before. I think whether we rate Arteta or not, you know whether he should be sacked if he doesn't win a league especially if slot wins a league he's gonna have to face the music but reality is we're you know one love for the rebuild with you know this might be the third year where we've been the bridesmaid but not necessarily the groom or whatever it is people we've kissed success we haven't reached success obviously i do think there are some factors out of Mikel arteta's control but i do think isolated to the variables he can control and the responsibilities he has and with you know winning the league being about fine margins i don't think he's always got it right and i do think he kind of gets his own way a bit too much at the club so you know do you get a more experienced man that could kind of stop Mikel Arteta from moving a bit crazy, if that makes sense? You know, you look at Wenger, he was a genius, but sometimes it goes left. He had David Dean to kind of pull him from the madness. And I do think if Arteta is going to stay, which he signed a new deal before the season, so that probably told you, regardless of what happens, he's staying, unless there's a dramatic fallout and, I don't know, Man United and Chelsea come above us, or, 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 or even, God forbid, Posta Coglu Spurs, they look the worst of the lot, especially with Amarin coming at United. I think I think United will be back soon. Of course, I hope I'm wrong. And I hope Amarin is more like VS Boas at Chelsea than Jose Mourinho. But it's an interesting one. Do you go for the more younger Wolves or the Monaco guy who kind of not like Edu, but they kind of fit the remit in what, you know, Arsenal young manager, young coaches, young players and all of that kind of stuff? Or do you go for a more experienced head that can get us across the line in his own way? As I said, it's about fine margins now, if I'm honest, to win a league title and really maximising everything. I don't know, people. 
In relation to Declan Rice and Bakayo Saka, as we know, Declan Rice played against Chelsea with a, a broken toe and painkillers. Don't know why he was called up for England. Don't know why he even tried to go play for England. Um, the same goes for Bakayo Saka, but obviously they're not going. They're, you know, they're, they're doing rehabilitation sessions at London Coley and the injuries have been moving mad. Apparently, Calafuri and Tommy Asu are expected back after the international break. As we know, you look at the other guards, you, you look at the other guards, the Timbers, who kind of not play a dangerous game but we're having to look after them and there could be players that are in the red zone and at risk of injuries or not necessarily playing 100 percent already that we don't know people it's quite contrasting from last season and apparently benjamin white's injury or rehabilitation isn't going to be four to eight weeks it could be 10 to 12 weeks people following his surgery in which in my opinion benjamin white needed to i don't know anything but i think he him and the club have known you need to do this a long time ago, maybe in the summer, maybe I'm wrong. But for the last few years, it's well known how many times. And it annoys me when people say people like football, footballers don't care or people look at Benjamin White and say, yo, he doesn't care about football because he doesn't watch it. How many years, even going back, if you care enough, go on Google and look at Rob Holden's comments where he's been saying Benjamin White plays, been playing with injuries. Mikel Arteta has said Ben White is known to hide his injuries. Obviously, he's a key player for us and we can't pay people to stay fit. It's peak, really. You know, the only saving grace is hopefully this puts an end to whatever persistent injury issues he's had. Obviously, you know, as a footballer, he's middle-aged, but he's a, what, 25, 6, 7-year-old man. You're going to need your hip or knee, whatever, if you're going to live life, able body, be a, be a father, I'm sure he's married now, be a grandfather, et cetera, et cetera. That's the only saving grace. But where Arsenal are concerned and, our, and, and what we need to do on the pitch, there's plenty of talking points before we look at injuries. Injuries are not exclusive to us. And again, when you... I don't want to be that guy, but when you start to deep it and let me know your thoughts, the games he's going to miss. A lot of people sit there and say, yeah, you know, no game is easy in the Premier League, but Arsenal have had a tough run and which I don't disagree. You know, first 11 games you've played at the Etihad. You've welcomed Liverpool to your place. You've gone to Aston Villa. You've gone to Newcastle. Um, you've done all of that. But what I say to that is, boy, everyone's got to play everyone twice, isn't it? And I'm sure of all the teams in the league, and you ask all fans, whether they've gone through it already or they're currently going through it, I'm sure if you ask them, they've looked at their calendar and there's probably a mad fixture list or mad run. This is just, you know, that I'm kind of, this is all games, but I'm kind of focusing people on, on, on the Premier League. This is before you factor in everything. And obviously, you know, the less players you have, the more you have to run your players into the ground. So did we play a dangerous game, not doing certain things in the summer? Did we isolate it away from actually transfer stuff? I haven't got it to hand, but I remember Mikel Arteta saying before the season started in one of his press conferences, what we had with Saliba, Gabriel and Benjamin White and our defensive options, he kind of said we got away with it. And historically, Arsenal have not got away with injuries, definitely where the Emirates era is concerned. But you look at the games he's missing. Every game's difficult, especially with our form. But boy, he's going to obviously miss Nottingham Forest. You would have had, loved to have had him available for sport in a way but yeah Nottingham Forest sport in Lisbon West Ham Manchester United you might look different under their new gaffer Fulham which the two games against Fulham if we got if we got three points from one of them where would we be Fulham Monaco Everton the double header against Palace in the League Cup and the Premier League Ipswich Brentford Brighton Spurs Aston Villa Dynamo Wolves Girona and Manchester City guys I am excited on one hand to see Calafuri a natural left footer and I assume Benjamin, Benjamin White, I'd love it to be that, but Timber on the right, Calafuri on the left, them being natural footers and just a bit different and seeing what Timber and Saka could do and, you know, I did think Martinelli looked a bit better with Calafuri down that left-hand side just to see what that could bring would be, I wouldn't say silver lining, but silver lining, but we're going to have to be cute and clever, especially around the, the festive period really and Again, Timber were Timber and Calafuri, we've had to manage their minutes. And yeah, you could talk about the Zinchenkos and Kivil, Zini who picks up Knox. Obviously, Tommy Asu, I love him, but I don't think anyone's holding their breath for sustained fitness from him, which I hope to be wrong. You're probably going to see Moreno Rice or Jorginho and probably an extended period of Thomas Partey at right back. We might even have to act in January. I must admit, in the summer, I thought we had good defensive options. Random, but I'm sure Declan Rice played centre-half at one point last season. Maybe it was a game or a few minutes. I did think we had good defensive depth. And I still maintain that. But everybody's not fit. And it's made me sit there and look and think, rah, of course, I want an inside forward or a versatile forward or whatever. I want a striker. I want a number eight, a Santi Cazola, a Cesc Fabregas type. You know, we obviously need to sign some goalies. We need to flush players out. 
But I'm not going to lie, this current period's made me think, raw like, it's going to sound mad, people. And I know you lot are tired of defenders, but could we do with another defender? Ideally, for me, a Tomiyasu, a Timber, kind of forcing it, but Calafuri play right back against PSG. One of the hybrids that are less so much Calafuri and obviously more Tomiyasu and Timber. Someone that can play across the defence. Because I... I and, Benjamin White's played centre-half for us, you know, this season once and historically at Arsenal, but he's known for playing right-back. When I say that, I am more thinking internally, do we need another centre-half? I don't know, people, man, but yeah, food for thought. As we know, Declan Rice required painkillers to play against Chelsea with a broken toe last Sunday. If it wasn't Chelsea away, he may not have even played at all. Probably need to dip into the market for some other midfield options. I am not condemning or endorsing ITKs. Because I'd love for him to be right. But Con Marble Halsey said Arsenal have made Isaac their number one target. Again, I'm sure Isaac will listen to Arsenal. He could wear that very same number for Arsenal. Obviously, respectfully to Kai Havertz, and I'm not saying to alienate him, but any striker, we heard it with Sesco, any striker that looks at Arsenal and wants to sign for us and is enticed by playing in the Premier League, living in London, playing with this group of players, being part of Mikel Arteta's team, anyone that looks at Kai Havertz and gets scared, take nothing away. I'm not dissing Kai. I don't want you because Sesco's moving a bit mad. I still have him, but... I'm sure we want Isaac, Premier League proven, great goal scorer, worked with Marino and Odegaard before, wears the number 14, loves scoring against Chelsea. Uh, uh, I'm not actually sure, I think Chelsea, but definitely loves scoring against Spurs. It makes a lot of sense. I'm sure he would listen. I'm sure personal terms may not be a problem, but it comes down to the fee. Now, unless Newcastle need to let him go to have some wiggle room around the financial rules and all of that, unless he's kind of burnt bridges and made it clear, yo, I want to leave. I can't, in which he can do that, I think it comes down to the price tag. And what is the price tag? You know, you look around the striker market, unless you're going to do the smart thing where Jokerez in the last year or two, he's on everyone's lips. Before that, where was he? You know, half of these strikers have to start somewhere. Duran was playing in MLS. Unless you're going to do a that thing, you have to sign one of these household names. And it's like having a, a, a strong asset. If, you know, in my 29 years, probably because of the new manager thing and Playing for, as a striker is a selfless act, I believe, in the modern day, if I'm honest with you, you know, especially in a Mikel Arteta system where you will get chances, but you're not going to get chances like that. I'd say the best attackers or the best, you know, it's the wide, the, the wide ones benefit from the system. They're playing out from the back, all that jazz. It's the wide men. And do we need to do the Liverpool thing where you've got Saka doing up mad numbers and he'd be our Salah? You've got your Mane, which at this moment in time, Martinelli isn't putting up mad numbers. Then you've got a facilitator like Kai Havertz who can score goals and do all the stuff Arteta demands. And then you've got an Isaac to mix in the thing. That would be the best of all the worlds, but I'm not sure. You know, I do think Mikel Arteta is going to have to find his own very own Erling Haaland in that you look at uh, Pep Guardiola, of course, you know, he's had some pure strikers per se. Um, but the Haaland thing, we've seen City have no striker, bare rotation options. And now you've got Haaland. I do think Haaland's general plays improve. But if you're asking him to be involved in the playmaking and just not be up front and score goals, he's in issues. So Pep probably had to compromise some something, you know, to bring in Haaland. Obviously, Haaland's an anomaly. It's Haaland, isn't it? Anyone will break their rules for Haaland. But I do think Mikel Arteta's got to start thinking about that. Take nothing away from Kai because I think Kai's worked that role perfectly. I just don't think Kai is going to be that guy that gets crazy numbers that ultimately wins games. And that could be another conundrum. For me, Kai's still be part of the team and you know from what I see you might not necessarily lose your spot but there might be a risk of you having to play in midfield which old conversations rear their old heads once again but yeah Isaac's more than welcome let me know I'm sure a lot of you would like Isaac but yeah we're still linked with Zubimendi I mean if we bring in the Sociedad CEO you've got Zubimendi you've got Mireno you bring in Isaac and Odegaard who are not from Spain but have you know lived over in Spain and in that particular part of Spain it'd be great Zubimendi's linked with everyone you know Arsenal Liverpool Manchester United Bayern Munich staying at Sociedad Barcelona links have re-emerged Manchester City all winter not having a proper plan b if there's no rodri i mean it is what it is but you know super and big up the galley out there you lot could apply this differently or if that's what you like but where i look at arsenal's pursuit of super mendy or even if liverpool or anyone else if you genuinely if you gen because we don't know what the reports are saying the reports say one thing we don't know what actually is going on in the world of football if you genuinely made contact with Sosia that tried to get a deal done, spoke with Zubamendi, and he's saying one thing and then doing another, I no matter how, you know, unless you're Lionel Messi or something like that, I think you should move away from it purely, if I'm completely honest with you. And I only say that because it's like me 
and some of you are on that i've got too much ego for that yeah it's like me trying to talk to a girl you know i might be the best thing ever but she's not giving me the time or the energy or you know anything that i want how much time you're going to keep chasing before you have some self-respect and say you know what i think you're wavy i think you're gorgeous i think you're one of the most beautiful women i've ever seen in the world but there's a billion gal in the world, man, I for forward and try something else. So I'm not sure on the Zuba Mendy thing, people. Where, you know, we've been linked with him. Zuba Mendy, I hear it, man. It is what it is. We've gone over, you know, the CEO of Monaco. Apparently, we want him. We've been linked with several CEOs. Uh, Jokerez has been linked with a bunch of clubs. I reckon he, him and Diamande of Sporting go to Manchester United in the summer. Deco of Barcelona has kind of distanced Barcelona from making a move. So if one drops out the race, that could be a spring in our step, people. Um, doesn't appear that there's anything new on this particular publication. I did cover this kind of stuff earlier, so go and check that out. Salah spoke about some Arsene Wenger advice as well, people, and said a very, very good player is always focused on the game. You see, my granddad, everybody listens to him. Um, actually, people, I'm doing you a lot of disservice because we need to go back. We have been linked with Mohamed Kudus. West Ham are expected to stand firm on Mohamed Kudus's 85 million release clause as they brace themselves for offers for their star forward next summer. I mean, can he perform off the left? Because if he can perform off the left, if you've got Kudus and Saka on the left and you've got Havertz up front, I still want a striker. I'm here for that. I, Mikel Arteta, I know it's very structured and I'm a naive fan, but you imagine if I know I'd prefer to see Saka on the right, even though some of you lot tried to fight me when he was a left back and I said he was a right winger and even when he was playing off the left, it'd be lovely to rotate both of them off either side. But is it realistic, people, to expect, let's just say, obviously, if you negotiate with West Ham lower, then great. Or if there's some make weights that could be used. But let's just assume we activate his 85 million release clause and we activate Jokerez's release clause. I do think we're at that point where we need to splash the bag, but that's 85 million times two. That's my maths is poor, but that's close to 200 odd million. Before we talk about outgoings, before we talk about several players who probably need contract renewals, and that does factor into the budget, before we talk about potentially selling people. Now we've got money, or we don't, depending on where you read. Would love, would love could but at the end of the day, he's a key player for West Ham. Long gone are the days of getting players or household names, I believe, on the cheap from fellow Premier League clubs. He's still got three years left on his deal. And apparently he's settled people. So, yeah, I mean, we could offer him the chance to stay in London, play in the Champions League and all of that jazz. I would love him, but they're going to stand firm on that. So I don't know where we're at with that really and truly people, but would love him. On the topic of Ben White, feels like I've spoken about him forever. Apparently he's ready to play for England again under Thomas Tuchel, which would be not great from a fan perspective because it, it was nice to have a player that plays all the time and gets to rest during the international break, even though he's injured. But he's one of England's best potential defensive options. Of course, you've got Trent and Reese James and all of that, but as part of the squad, Ben White could be good, especially if Tuchel plays a three at the back. Surely Benjamin White's got a spot as a centre-half, people. I don't know, though. I'm just trying to promote. Uh, Arsenal have just a 5% chance of winning the Premier League this season in comparison to Liverpool, who have a 60.3% and City have 34.3%, according to Opta. Now, that's obviously determined by how the season started and probably for Arsenal and City, how the last few games have gone. Now, football isn't one with AI or computers and things. It's one on the football pitch in which if the season ended right now, Liverpool on slot, he's matched Klopp's Premier League title who already is fun, fun and games. And it's quite disappointing for us, man, really and truly, if I'm honest with you. But on that note, we've definitely gone over a lot of things. Let me know all of your thoughts, people. Rest assured, if there's any significant Arsenal-related talking points and stuff like that, I'll get videos out for you. Make sure you check out the video I did on Yil on Kenan Yildiz, people, a player I'd love to sign from Juventus. So, yeah, videos, reactions to news, tactical analysis, speaking about Mikel Arteta and everything Arsenal, you know your boy's got you covered, so make sure the notification bells are on, you're following on all the socials, everything's in the description. Most importantly, bless up for being here, appreciate you lot, stay safe, stay blessed, let me know what you think in the comments once again, one love.